time flies so fast? And if so, then is time fleeting or is it eternal? Time is a temporal factor, so it change. With it is progress, age, our, uh, our world, and yet we always hear tomorrow never comes. We always say tomorrow, and yet tomorrow is tomorrow. Tomorrow never becomes now. The reason I'm even uh, talking about this is because I don't think that this is not only me who notices it, who notices it, but that time flies so fast. And should it even bother us? For some people, yes, it would bother them. And here, we would like to know why. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scriptures. Please bear with me. There's a construction um, happening in our neighborhood. That's why you, you would hear some hammering and some noises. Anyways, so time usually matters when we actually have so much things to do. We only notice it when we plan ahead so we know what to do, when to do. And when one has nothing much to do, the day would be really long. Our perception of time would then be subjective and it borders utilitarianism. It is usually said, it is usually said, a time well spent is a time well used. But it still depends on our perception. And yet, time is not dependent on our sense perception. And so we think, is time part of the creative element? Is time part of the creative element? All right? Or is it eternal as God? We'd have to think that God goes beyond the border of time. So that means time is not eternal and is part of creation. And that is in truth. Matthew 24, verse 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. It does mean that time is irregardless in the perception of our Lord. It meant God's words are permanent. It will not change. So that means God sees time differently the way that we perceive time. Now, let us move on with our perception of time. When we always think about time, attached, uh, attached with our thoughts, when we think about time, are our worries. We are always worried. We are always worried. Why are we worried? Because in our thoughts, we cannot handle time well, why am I saying that? So let, let us take a look at Matthew 6. That's Matthew 6, verse 34, where it says, Matthew 6, verse 34, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Simply saying, our Lord is teaching us, our Lord is telling us that we need to shift our attention. Tomorrow basically does not exist yet. Your attention should be in the present time. Your focus should be on the now. You are in reality living now. You are not living in the tomorrow. It is nice to plan. It is good 
to get organized. And yet the reality is life happens now in the present time, not tomorrow. So things change every day. Nothing actually stays the same. And yet our efforts seem to change as time passes by. Sometimes you are excited. Sometimes you get bored. What does this actually tell us? The priorities and the focus that we thought matters seems to fall on not anymore. What we think matters does not matter actually. That usually is the case when we depend on things that change rather than on things that are eternal. Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Time, time and time again, we are reminded by Jesus to depend on the true source. Hold on to what matters most, and your worries would not be so big at all. If you hold on to the fleeting world, chances are you are just holding on to nothing. But if you actually seek and depend on God who is eternal, these things that worries you, you would suddenly realize it is controllable. The reality that we need to grasp is that we are created beings and that the things we usually think about, the worries that often bothers us, is what? For the Gentiles eagerly, Matthew 6 verse 32, For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. You find yourself often staring either at the clock or at the calendar, saying to yourself, geez, I did not fully realize today is, or wow, it is already this time. What usually triggers this thought? One thing pops to mind. Worry. You are basically worried. Worried about the unknown, of the uncontrollable. You then basically lack one thing, faith. When things seem to get out of hand, when you try to grapple, when you try to understand, there is actually nothing wrong in trying to understand. Let me repeat that. There is actually nothing wrong in trying to understand. Proverbs 4. Let's turn to Proverbs 4, chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, Wisdom is supreme, so get wisdom. And whatever else you get, get understanding. It is basically through understanding can you grow wisdom. Why do we need understanding and wisdom? It is actually in the same chapter of Proverbs. It is in verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget or turn away from the words from my mouth. For the only way for us to know and fully retain God's word is through understanding. And as we live and as we live and gain more understanding, we thus grow wise. You won't be able to turn away if you fully grasp God's word. You cannot have true wisdom if you do not have God's words inside of you. 
Why? Why? It is in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 6. Do not abandon wisdom. And yet she will watch, and she will watch over you, love her, and she will guard you. True wisdom guides you to the right path. With it, you will never be lost. You find your way to eternal life. You find um, the, the graces and gifts of God. That is if you have wisdom. If we go back then, time allows us to grow in wisdom. For with time comes experience and knowledge. The truth is, time is one factor that actually opens us to God. For time helps us realize that every chance and every experience is a reality that is God sent. In truth, we live in the reality of space and time, the created universe. This actually gives us the way to grow in wisdom. Time grants us the experience we need so we, grow, so we can grow in knowledge along the way, thus making us mature and wise. So grab every opportunity that you have for those are hidden opportunities to learn. Hidden opportunities, why what am I saying? Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew. Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew. That's Matthew 13. That's Matthew 13. All right. Verse 11. Where it says, and I want you to listen to this. He answered, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given for you to know, but it has not been given to them. For if you grow in wisdom, for if you grow in wisdom, will you be given the chance to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and finally be given eternal life? You have to be able to use the time given to you well. By worrying, you will, be, you will not be able to cultivate, to cultivate what you actually need for the eternal reward of heaven, which is wisdom. Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Open our eyes, Lord to the absolute truth so we can be aware of what we ought to do grant us the grace to grow in wisdom through your spirit so our faith be strengthened and not be, to be led to despair and grudging thank you for this gift of life with your spirit may we learn to use it well for you formed us with your very image we are the best versions of ourselves from the moment you created us. Pour onto us the precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, so we can maintain the holiness of being. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we appreciate you being with us here in uh, today's Bible in Focus. We hope that you're doing well. Okay, now that the uh, the pandemic restriction is down, all right, uh, we are still, we still need, actually, we still need to uh, take care, to keep safe. Remember your boosters, your vaccines, your masks, and if you're going out, remember to keep your distance, all right? And lastly, um, we are already, the Seed of God ministry is already holding Bible fellowships all around the Archdiocese of Manila. All right, so uh, we, um, we've done with the Catholic Women's League and also with the Knights of Columbus. And uh, we're still going around. Actually, we uh, 
we have regular schedules with some of the organizations already. And so um, if you're interested, you, and, if you're, and if you are in our area, all right, so we invite you to join us to experience the fellowship of God's love. All right, so keep safe and God bless.